What do the latest numbers out of Emirates tell us about the state of the recovery? Well, for Emirates, we are actually experiencing a very strong uh, recovery. Don't forget, we started uh, really in the uh, summer of uh, 21, with a little bit going on in 2020. Uh, we organized ourselves at the beginning of 21 to start taking back all the resources that we had laid off, uh, principally the human capital side of things, got the fleet back into the into high level of serviceability. So by October of last year, we were operating probably about 60% of our original capacity. And that's been uh, gradually expanded June to up to June of this year, where as we sit today, uh, it's a good story. I still have about 60 380s on the ground, uh, but we're, we're, as soon as our crews are uh, retrained, we brought them all back again as best we can. We'll get the rest of them in the air probably about the uh, end of this year, the beginning of next year. So Tim, I've been speaking with aviation executives on the ground here in Doha. One of the main concerns they've been raising with me is about the soaring cost of everything, including the price of fuel. Are rising prices going to derail the recovery in your view? You know, it's very, it's a very interesting question. Uh, you know, we, everything that's going on now defies laws of economics, macro and micro. So on the one hand, you have a surging demand for air travel. That's not surprising, given that the economy with the global economy was so globalized for the last 30 years. And countries have been completely restricted or banged up, sorry, for two years. So it's unlikely that irrespective of impediment, whether it be price, whether it be airport facilities, that that demand is going to dissipate in the short term. In other words, we haven't got to the tipping point in elasticities yet, surprisingly, simply because the airline community has had to raise its prices to cover off and mitigate the fuel price uh, increase, which has been astronomical. But the demand remains resilient, and we don't see any slackening of that, which is very, very interesting because in my career, I've never seen anything like it. So it's a question of what will happen first. Will demand taper or dilute over the next years as these major economic uh, uh, factors, are so, which are so adverse to our business and the global economy, remain in place or they go down first? I don't know which is, which is what it's going to be. At the moment, the airline community is managing and actually making a little bit of money. We have very strong cargo, very strong passenger demand, as I said, much higher yields. Now, it's anybody's guess as to which way that's going to go. Um, when do I see that? Personally, with the amount of capacity that has been stripped out, airline seats out of the market, we still don't see China and larger Asian countries. I think there may be a continuum of what we're doing today. And uh, therefore, you know, if we're smart about what we're doing, we could come out of this with a little bit of money in our pockets, but we'll see.